you are a writer first, would you say that? Mm -hmm. Or yeah, so how did you get into that? Was that part of the healing or did that come out of something else? And But I, I know that it's been wedded. So I, I was kind of curious of how that came together. Yeah, so I've always been a writer. I like told myself when I was in third grade, that that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, but what I found particularly helpful and when I was attempting to recover from this relationship was sort of documenting my process because it was a way to sort of connect with other people, realize I wasn't alone. Um, and then that started years and years ago. And I started building a fan base on that of just connecting with these other people and that kind of thing. Um, and it segued into a lot of other writing opportunities, um, like doing an advice column for Zeus, the dating app and several other options. I wrote articles about Tinder. I wrote a lot of different relationship and dating advice because that's where the space I was in. I literally was actively dating, actively searching for a partner. So it made sense. And then I was on the other side of it. I'd met my now husband on Tinder. We started dating, building a relationship. And I still was using writing as a way to sort of process and go through that. Just like, I mean, journaling is so impactful. I just was journaling for a lot of, a lot of eyes. Um, I then transitioned to um, social platforms like Instagram and TikTok and um, sort of building an online presence in that way and meeting clients that way. I used to just meet clients, you know, at the coffee shop or at my house, you know, but then I built an online presence. All my clients today are do not live in my area. And we work together that way. And it's built since then. I've since had uh, two books. One is Grateful in Love. And another one is A Couple's Goals Journal. And then the one that came out recently, those were all publishers who contacted me through my social media followings and asked if I had any ideas. That's awesome. I know I started yeah. following you way back in 2019. And I oh, think, yeah, awesome. you're yeah, I know you had this large following on Medium, and I, I think you were primarily in the relationship topics at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would have said you were very solidly on how to build a healthier relationship. I think for me, coming to realize your abuse history was sort of, you know, through snippets, it's through pieces of it until you kind of, mm -hmm. was that a process, do you think, coming to terms of that part of your identity? Yeah, yeah, I wish I could put it in some like magic diamond form where it's really crystallized but yeah it was I mean part of it like the title of the book reclaim and recover I I really had to claim that for myself of just being an abuse survivor and what that meant what that looked like I was very judgy of the term abuse survivor I didn't want to feel like that was still connected to me I didn't want that to be a part of my past but it, it was a part of my past, even way before that romantic relationship. My my mother was very abusive. I'm no contact with her today and haven't had any contact with her in about five years. She's never met my youngest daughter, that kind of thing. And recognizing that abuse survivor is actually an empowering statement of it's something that we've overcome. It's something that we've, we've grown from, we've learned from, and we're not going to settle for or stand for in the future. Recognizing that part of it too. And a lot of that came from just the identification of those who responded like you, who commented and had, could relate on those, on those levels. Yeah. You, I had the same sort of trajectory when, I mean, I come from a long history of abuse as well, uh, all the way back. And I rejected it so severely that I wouldn't even see trauma patients as a clinician. Oh. Yeah, I, I just had that as my personal standard. I, I wouldn't, I, I didn't want to know about it. I didn't want to get trained in it. I didn't want to hear other people's experiences about it. Now, granted, you can't stop that from happening in the office. People come in for other reasons and sure enough, they have abuse history, but I didn't want to advertise that. And yeah. calling myself a victim, I, I was a survivor or I just didn't use a word at all. But lately, I would say in the last few years, I've embraced the term abuse survive, um, abuse victim. And I find it very empowering, like I'm standing in my my uh, story and I'm standing in the strength that I was resilient to come through something really horrific that it's amazing how that term victim has so much shame attached to it. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's it's own, taking that on is a way for me to reject the shame. I reject people attributing something wrong with me for my history. It's not my fault. I survived mm -hmm. something. It's it's a victory that I survived something. Yeah, I love that. I love that, Carrie. You're so right. 
Yeah. It's it. So I'm, I'm, I was fascinated when you said that. It's like, wow, I, I've been on that. I really have been on that. And there's so much, um, so much anger that's uh, towards abuse victims that I think is really misdirected and should be placed elsewhere, culture, society, training, you know, the abuser, all of that. Mm -hmm.